squeezed a lot of art viewing into the past 48 hours um, around town, which has been good. So thanks for having a lot of nice shows up while I've been here to go see. Um, Becky wanted me to say something about the new work in relation to the old work, I think is kind of what it was. And hopefully that means something to you. I don't know what you know of my older work to compare it to this. but. Uh, for the past 15 years or so, I've been all, doing almost exclusively graphite drawings, um, which was not a plan. It just worked out that way. And because you would think that you could figure out everything about graphite pretty fast because you, you spend your entire life with a pencil in your hand, um, writing and doing other things like that. But then you, the more you work with it, the more potential you find in it. And next thing you know, 15 years goes by and you've made a bunch of little little drawings trying to figure out what to do with this pencil. Um, so uh, and where the work had been going for a while was very uh, straightforward in like a pictorial sense or what you would think of as straightforward and that kind of um, established uh, picture plane that you look into, you know, with um, some sort of representational depth. And um, I really felt like there was enough of that with my name on it out there that I no longer had anything really to prove in terms of showing you that I could draw what a room looked like or what a mountain looked like or what a valley or something like that. Um, and I really wanted to just um, experiment with picking apart the picture one and uh, addressing recognizable subject matter from a variety of vantage points and trying to cohesively um, combine that into one pictorial form. So, that's kind of where we are now. And it coincided with the, with moving. Um, moving was a very strange thing for me in that I, my wife and I thought about it for about four years before we actually did it. And it kind of, Philly was a town where we, we were kind of thrown into it. The largest city my wife had ever lived in before we moved here was 40,000 people. And she got thrown into Philly. <laughs> It's just a rough way to land. Um, even if you love the city, it's a rough city to land in with, with that kind of life experience. And so we started out and it felt like a struggle and then we just embraced it for a very long time. Um, and then, at least from my perspective, I started living this life that was in, a, in an unhealthy way rooted in this idea of nostalgia for where I come from. And I began to miss family and I began to miss things that uh, sort of like determine my worldview, and I started um, when I was in my house. I lived in Nashville. Even though I lived in Northern Liberties, I was in the Nashville radio. I knew about commuter traffic. I knew all this stuff. And like when I was in my house, <laughs> I lived in Nashville. And then I left. And then when I left the house, I lived in Philly. When I went home, I, I returned to kind of the idea that I lived in Tennessee. And uh, it was really bad. I read a book on nostalgia like the, the history of it, and I found out that Napoleon would kill soldiers that were exhibiting signs of nostalgia because he didn't want to bring down basically the, the team spirit of a conquering army. And so if anybody, um, you know, repeatedly act like they were missing home, he killed them. And leave them there, like, we're going forward, you know, uh, no matter what. And uh, it's a horrible thing to do, but it's actually a pretty good management technique. <laughs> If you have to go and conquer, yeah, uh, or try to conquer Russia and fail miserably, but um, so uh, I was kind of trapped in this idea of constantly looking forward and, and constantly looking back. And I feel like most everybody has a difficult time existing in the present. You can't capture the present moment; it's always flying by. But I think most people live in an immediate past and an immediate future. But I was. Uh, moving further and further away from that immediate past and future is something that I thought might happen in 10 years and something that had happened 10 years prior. And that's what a lot of this imagery kind of adds up to me is a lot of overlapping moments trying to capture something that I can't emotionally and mentally grasp. You know? um, so that became the, the physical structure of the drawing, I guess. Uh, or, and, and that's how it got translated anyway. So what you see here are a number of drawings that um, something kind of 
uh, thematically simple as my wife crocheting, um, which is what she does. It's sort of like a stress reliever. Um, it's like I was telling Becky, there's a lot of anxiety issues in my wife's family, and planning a repetitive hobby is what can like make you a little bit mentally healthier, you know? And so, like she said, some, some women chose to crochet repetitively, and some people chose to repetitively drink. <laughs> <laughs> so she she chose a healthier path. But um, and then and so uh, other things are a little bit more conceptually um, complicated, like this I, this this drawing called profits over here, which, which is um, uh, the idea of sort of like um, receiving information that is uh, spiritual and intangible and abstract. And so um, Ruben's here. Ruben's, if Ruben's going to come stand next to him, if you want to be, I'm going to ask him for the rest of the night trying to take a picture next to the drawing, but he was one of the models for that. Um, and in, in a real basic sense, it's like, uh, I imagine Ruben's as this uh, prophet receiving information, and then this is my wife Tracy, like, taking notes from whatever he's, he's saying. Um, so the, that, that idea of time got uh, translated in something as basic as, a hobby or something a little bit more, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, and then it kind of runs the gamut from around, you know, uh, throughout the rest of the drawing. <coughs> Some are still life's kind of more rooted in a basic idea of like death or, you know, um, whatever's hanging out in my kitchen at the time, you know. And then um, others are a little bit more narrow in their structure. And then if you haven't been, I'm not going to try to cram everybody into the ball. Um, but if you make it back into the ball, I can really show you because it's like 10 feet right there. Um, you'll see collages that are, um, at least in terms of theme related to the drawings, they were built up at the same time that these draw the graphite works were, and they were a way to quickly work through a compositional idea um, by overlapping related images to kind of break up the picture plane and build a, 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 a form. Um, so you'll see still lifes in there that are very much related to the, the still lifes here. And those were more, some of them were studies and some of them were done afterward to kind of like see how quickly I could solve a problem uh, that would lead to future work or work, work like this. The sculptures that are in there, um, you'll see in the drawings. And I made them initially as props to be in the drawings, but I like them enough to share because I'm just that guy. Um, so you'll see, like in this one, where I'm playing the clarinet that is on a pedestal in there. Um, you'll see a couple of the, you know, the heads, the kind of uh, sculptural heads here tucked away in the images with the figures, and also on the still life tabletops and things like that. So. Um,